the youth of this city. I will seek justice on your behalf. This is a moment. This is your moment. Let's ensure that we have peaceful and productive rallies that will develop structural and systemic changes for generations to come. You're at the forefront of this cause. And as young people, our time is now. All right, joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to say is David Clark, Sheriff of Milwaukee County. And uh, it's, uh, the website is thepeoplessheriff.com. Sheriff, welcome back to the show, sir. Thanks. It's always a pleasure. And you can follow me on Twitter at Sheriff Clark, Clark, C-L-A-R-K-E. Great. At Sheriff Clark, C-L-A-R-K-E. Okay, at Sheriff Clark. Let me, let me ask you, uh, you, you just heard some of what Alan Dershowitz had to say in the previous segment. Um, I know that you're not happy about this either. Not at all. Uh, look, this uh, state's attorney is a neophyte. She's a political activist. That was a phenomenal political statement. It was inconsistent with the rule of law. It was inconsistent with our system of justice. Uh, that was more a statement about revenge. She's supposed to represent all of the people of, of Baltimore County, not the youth, not this group, not that group, everybody. And when you start pointing out certain uh, demographics that, that, that you're looking for justice for, it's a sham. This isn't justice. It's revenge. She has made this political now, and I'm calling these cops who are, uh, who've had criminal charges um, issued against them political prisoners. They've been offered up as a human sacrifice to an angry mob looking for, like I said, not justice, but revenge. This should be disconcerting to every law enforcement officer in America. And we need to, to, to band together and make it very clear that we will not be used as human sacrifices to satisfy an angry mob. Look, this thing was ruled a homicide. A homicide is just a manner of death as, as compared to, say, a suicide, uh, accidental death, or uh, natural causes. Just because a death is ruled a homicide does not mean that somebody is criminally responsible. Right, Sheriff, I Sheriff, not to interrupt, but what wasn't the Michael Brown shooting ruled a homicide and the Eric Gardner case ruled a homicide as well? Exactly, and that's why I point that out. It doesn't mean that somebody is criminally responsible for it. I don't know all the facts of the case, but I don't have to. After listening to that political statement by that neophyte prosecutor uh, who demonstrated to me that she's nothing more than a political activist, you cannot toy with our system of justice in the United States uh, in the fashion that she is. I believe in our system of justice. I believe these officers will get real justice as time goes on. This is early in the process, and I tell people, be patient, trust the process, uh, and, and the process, more times than not, comes to the right conclusion, and I think these officers will be exonerated, but it's unfortunate that they're going to have to go through hell. Their lives have been turned upside down, and uh, that's the thing that has me incensed today. Let me ask you, because of your expertise as a, as a law enforcement officer, sir, um, the, 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 uh, the murder. I mean, murder. If, if, you know, he, was in the, he was in the police van. Um, is, there, is there any circumstance that you could envision where these police officers, I mean, the union, naturally the union will come to their defense. The lawyer who's representing them already made a statement and said that they did nothing wrong, that n nothing they did or didn't do contributed to this man's death. Um, I also hear that the rules about putting a seatbelt on or buckling up the prisoner in the van are so new that they hadn't even been written up yet and hadn't been distributed to all the officers yet. So, do, I mean, explain to, what do you think happened in that van, and what do you think the, the cops did as far as following procedure? Well, I don't know what happened in that van. I wasn't there. I don't have access to all of the reports and all of the evidence. I haven't seen the inside of the van, so I would be uh, contradicting my own advice for people to uh, right, right. Uh, hold, their, you know, hold their fire, keep their powder dry on this. We'll know soon enough. We know that something happened to Freddie Gray. All right, it's pretty obvious. It was not a natural death. However, that does not mean just because something happened to him and he died that the cops are automatically responsible for that death. I heard this prosecutor at this news conference uh, stand up and say that they stopped two times and did not render aid. Sure, that's problematic. However, it doesn't make it criminal. There may be some civil tort here. There may be some rules violations. I'm not going to get into that, but I will say this. If it's a rule violation, it doesn't make it criminal. If there's some civil tort here, well, then that's handled in our, our, our civil courts. It's not handled in our criminal court. And we don't try to uh, make up for this 
with some sham criminal charges against Baltimore's fine. And, and, and Sheriff, uh, you know, you heard her say that she wants the youth to be part of a, uh, a, a movement for systematic change. Uh, yesterday, Al Sharpton said, and the mayor of Baltimore spoke at his function, said that we need the Justice Department to take over the police forces in this country. Isn't that the goal of, of, of what's going on, not only here, but around the country right now? Without a doubt, and it's happening in cities all across America now. But another thing that she said uh, that incensed me, she said, I hear the voices. She's not supposed to hear voices. A competent prosecutor knows this is George Zimmerman and the Duke Lacrosse case all over again, an overzealous prosecuting attorney hearing the voices. She is supposed to shut that out, read all of the, the, the hundreds of pages of reports, which, by the way, she couldn't do in a 24-hour period. That's another topic for another day, and I'm an experienced homicide investigator, and I know how these uh, investigations work and how the charging conferences go. But she's supposed to look at all of the evidence, wait for the forensics examinations to come back, there's some stuff that the forensics exam hasn't been concluded. How she could do all this in 24 hours, it doesn't pass the smell test. This stinks to high heaven. Yeah. All right. Sheriff, thank you so much for sharing with us. We'll speak to you again soon, sir. Sounds good. Thank you. Take care. Sheriff uh, of Milwaukee County, uh, David Clark, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, as long as there are voices out there like his, and, uh, and in this case, uh, from a legal standpoint, like Alan Dershowitz, uh, maybe these men will get justice uh, in the end. Uh, we're coming back with the panel. Don't go away.